Hi, uh, is this uh, Captain Lewis? Uh, yes, speaking. Hi, uh, this is uh, Captain Alliday. Uh, I got your email and I'm um, uh, responding to it. Okay. Um, I received, I got the complaint in, and I was trying to find out, uh, because here at the USAR, we didn't take action on it because it went straight to Colonel Han. So okay. has, has Colonel Han been working with you on this uh, no one action? No has been working on me on it in any way, shape, or imagination. He has not? Nobody has contacted me. Okay. All right. Um, I read through, as I'm reading through the complaint, I'm trying to figure out exact the stuff that happened with uh, on your civilian status. Um, that we can't do it. That's not an IG issue. That's nothing that we can touch or even begin to, to deal with. However, what we can look at is the mental health evaluation um, and the involuntary separation piece of it because that does fall into the category that's, uh, I guess you say, IG appropriate to handle. Okay. Now, on the mental health evaluation, has the unit... Have you have you done it yet or no? I haven't done it yet. I okay, did so. I, I did uh, submit uh, several emails that shows the, the correspondence I had with the units and my commander, and I also submitted um, a voice uh, recording wherein my commander uh, explicitly told me that I will be thrown out of the military and that. I have to submit to that mental health evaluation in the state of Missouri. Now, the one thing I'm trying to get research down is the the if you do it outside of the state of Missouri. Right now, according to my initial read of regulations, that you can do it anywhere. Only the only difference is the army doesn't have to pay for you to do it outside outside of the area that they designated. So if you decide you want to do it in New York, the Army is not going to pay for you to go to New York. They will pay from your home of record to what it would have cost to get you from your home of record to the actual site. It would not pay from, if you live in Missouri now, to go to New York to sleep overnight or whatever the case may be. They're not going to pay for that. By regulation, they're not required to pay for that. So... Uh, so when your unit that you, because I'm reading and we told, you did tell the unit that you would pay for it out of your own pocket. Or, did, or was there a conversation that came back and said you were not willing to pay for your own? No, I think, uh, uh, Captain, that you do not have down the uh, basics of the case. What really happened is I was in my military uniform carrying out... No, no, stop, 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 stop. Okay. Because they said you were, did you have orders where you actually on an order when that happened? On orders when that happened. Um, are you a reservist or are you full-time? I'm AGR, but you okay. have to be, now, the, that's what I'm trying to get to, I mean, I'm trying to explain. The, whatever happened at the hospital when you was on, when you was in uniform, if you were in a, in a duty status, uh, meaning on the set of orders or approved by that commander to do that duty, then I can't discuss any of that because that's not IG appropriate. That's something that's being handled through the civil authorities, not through the IG because IG can't, we can't influence that one way or the other. So and I'm not I'm, asking you to influence it. Okay. Um, what I'm saying is that um, based on the protocols I was given as a medical officer in residency, what I did and what I wore was within the Army regulations. That is the point. I, you know, even the commander sent out an email that indicated that recruitment activities can be done and they can be done in military uniform. So okay. the question of whether there was an order or not is not necessary. I do not need orders to fulfill. Okay, but my question, my, well, I'm trying to get you to explain to you that the IG can't do anything about the assault that took place. And I'm not Did asking we? you to do anything about the assault, but I wanted to give you background information as to what happened and what makes it inappropriate. 
you know, uh, the whole situation, how it reflects into the mental health evaluation. So the real key here is that I'm not even, I, I do not need to submit to a mental health evaluation. That is the point. And even when I said, do you know what, I'm going to respect my commander and submit to an, a mental health evaluation, and my house was broken into and I fled, literally fled to Maryland, and I was talking to my commander over, over the phone, telling her that I had left because I felt my life was in danger. I mean, people broke into my house with guns drawn on my kid, on my family. And I was on the phone telling her, okay, there's no need, let me do it in Missouri. I mean, let me do it here in Maryland. There are all these places around here. This is now my new place of residence. And she was still telling me to go back to Missouri. While I was in Maryland, I've already, you know, gotten a new place, you know, uh, in Maryland. I had all the documentations for that. And then she told me that I'm having too many personal issues and therefore she's going to discharge me. So what I'm trying to let you know is that we can compartmentalize things. However, they, they are not that simple. I'm not asking you to do anything about the assault. What I'm saying is that the information you were given that I wasn't on orders is false because it is not according to army regulations. You know, per army regulations, I could do certain obligations that will fulfill my monthly requirements as a reservist and I could do it in uniform and the activity I was engaged in was fully covered in the army regulations and requirements. And okay. it isn't now, the first now, time you, I was now, doing it. The question is, were you getting paid for that? Yes, I wasn't getting paid for what I was doing on campus. No, I wasn't. Because okay, well then, if you weren't getting paid, I mean, you weren't in a duty status. No, 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 no. I don't understand what you mean by getting paid. When you say getting paid, do you mean from the civilian or from the military? Okay, not from the military. Of course, so I was getting so, paid. So, yes. This is what I'm asking. So, your unit did an actual pay action for the recruiting activity you was doing. I sent them the information. They never uh, responded to it. I followed up. I told them again. They said I should send it again, and I resent it, and no action was taken about it. And I have proof of that. Okay, so A, you have an approved RST form or documentation from the commander that says, hey, you was approved to do this, and a VA uh, a form 1380 where somebody signed off on it saying that you were performing this type of duty on this day. Yes, I'm over. Let me tell I'm, I'll be honest with you, Captain. You know, what we are doing right here is really just kind of like splitting hairs. What happened is that I was in my full military uniform. I'm a commissioned officer in the United States Army Reserve. And while I was in uniform, somebody assaulted me while I was seated and going about my... They didn't assault me when I was doing recruitment activities and talking to people. They assaulted me when I was in my office and seated. You know, it okay. is no difference. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, to, you know, the, the, I, I'm and I'm sorry to cut you off. It is no different from a full-time soldier wearing his uniform, going into uh, duty, coming off, and going back home to sleep, and people seeing that guy in uniform and assaulting that guy. You know, really, the, where's the hair splitting here? You, we're talking about my life. I spent two days in jail. I was taken to three hospitals, all of them claiming I was insane, I had lost my mind. I hadn't worked for over a year right now. I've spent about $100,000 of my own funds, all because I was looking out for my fellow troops. And the best I'm getting so far, and even from you, is that it doesn't make a difference. Like, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. From the IG side of the house, we have regulation that says what is IG appropriate, what is not IG appropriate to deal with. So the two areas, as I read through all the stuff that you sent, I read through every every bit of it, I watched everything. The, the two pieces that I pulled out, which is why I'm calling you today to clarify, the two pieces I pulled out that the IG can assist you with is A, the mental health evaluation, and B, um, the comments of the involuntary separation. 
And three, the violation of professional ethic as well, which falls under the purview of the IG. Because I was disrespected by my commander over the phone. Um, it, I mean, and, and repeated attempts that was made by me to get some form of guidance, to get some form of counseling after a traumatic event happened with no clarification whatsoever. It is significant. Okay. So, now I have an idea because I have to sort through it all and I have to get both sides of the story and I have to follow my own regulations on what I can and can't get too involved in. So, uh, so the commander, we say abuse of authority or harassment, uh, has she been harassing you or has it just been that one call? Uh, well, in, in the letter, right? like I told you, I mean, I was told that I can either show up for, um, for, uh, for the interview voluntarily or I can be escorted. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the, yeah, and and uh, and also given the fact that uh, the statements um, um, uh, that um, uh, or I can be escorted, you know, the comments that she made on the mental evaluation, and the whole reason why the assault charges or the assault, everything goes back there. Now let me let me let me uh, let me straighten this out. I know IG cannot do those things, and I'm not asking IG to step in. I'm not asking IG to intervene. I'm taking care of that. I've already reported to the appropriate authorities just like I did to IG. However, for you or the IG to effectively do the a thorough investigation, the circumstances that surrounded my being viciously attacked and assaulted plays a role into it. Because it is for those same reasons that my commander was saying that I needed a mental health evaluation to begin with and if and in spite of the fact that I told her that do you know what I was also called a terrorist by this hospital they reported me to the FBI that I was a terrorist they reported me to the F they reported they had me arrested and jailed for two days that I was trespassing while I was still legally employed it took me six months and forty thousand dollars of my own funds to get out. The case was eventually dismissed with prejudice and the criminal record the hospital had created for me was expunged. I shared all these things with the units and with the commander. And she still came back and told me that it is still based on the information she got from the hospital that she's calling into question my mental stability. Even after I told her they took me to three hospitals, all of those hospitals find me in this, find me found me sane. I personally have seen a psychiatrist or a psychologist, and the psychologist said I was fine. And the reports that were made by by the hospital that I was trespassing. Hello. None of, the, none of the records from your previous visits. Did you supply those to your command and say, hey, here's the proof that I actually went and here's the diagnosis? I did. I, 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 I relayed this information to her. You know, I did. I relayed that, I, that this will be the fifth um, evaluation if she still insists that I go ahead. I'm aware that if she still insists that I go ahead and do it. I told her. And I said, you know what, this ha the, it is having a traumatic stuff on me, on my health. You know, having okay, to so, now... So from our standpoint, you're questioning whether you have to take it or are you saying you will take it as long as you're authorized I'm not to going to it. take it. I think it is an improper mental health referral in light of all the evidence that I had given to her. And what is the basis for me needing one in the very first place? So that is what the question is. Okay. It is in the whole concept of me needing to go for a mental health evaluation in the very first instance is uncalled for. It is improper. Okay. Now, 